welcome to Basketball Talk Pro. I'm Ron Ecker. Uh, today I want to talk to you about a defensive thing, a, a part of defense that goes unnoticed, I believe, uh, and yet is very important, and that is playing defense uh, in scramble. It happens a, quite a bit in a game that you're in a position where you're, you're completely uh, a lot of times disorganized. Uh, I like the definition that uh, is in the dictionary. It defines scramble as a hasty, undignified, and disorganized struggle for something. Well, the something is to get back to being organized uh, and not uh, in scramble. But it is uh, very hectic. Uh, it's chaos a lot of times. Uh, and you're in trouble. When you're in scramble, you're in trouble. And uh, one of the problems that you face is that um, what the offense is doing, in, it, it, it puts you in scramble or keeps you in scramble, is unpredictable. So you're, there you are, you're, first of all, you're disorganized, you're struggling, uh, it's chaotic, uh, it's uh, frustrating, uh, and then you're facing uh, offense that you've never seen before, in most cases, uh, especially if a, a team is prepared for it. So uh, it's a difficult thing. It, it, it takes time, uh, and, and as a coach, you can't ignore it. Most coaches do, though. Um, they just uh, don't, don't really pay any attention to it. Um, now, it can happen any time in a game. It happens a lot more than people realize. Uh, and sometimes it's uh, uh, the offense forces you into it. Sometimes you force yourself uh, into it. But it just uh, happens enough so that you, you need to consider it. And I hope you, you will. Now, some of the reasons for getting into um, Scramble is uh, something that the offense does. Uh, and we'll go through uh, about six or seven causes here uh, of where it happens. And, uh, and, and so that you're prepared and you become aware of it in a game, aware of it in your team, uh, you, it's easier for you to uh, develop ways to deal with it. One of the first ones, and it happens a lot, is uh, after a fast break. Uh, on the fast break, you're running hard just to get back. That's the first thing. Actually, it's much easier to stop the fast break and, uh, from hurting you uh, than it is for what happens next. You're running to get in position. You don't have your man. Uh, you're not in position. Uh, you're str you're uh, crashing around trying to get in position or get to your man or get to somebody. Uh, and if that offense is active at that time, it's very, very difficult. You're going to stay and scramble, so you've got to learn to play uh, play in it. It's the most dangerous, in my, my opinion, part of the game, and that's proven. Uh, and the amount of points that are scored in that area, as I said, the fast break gets defended. It's Anybody can run from one end of the floor in three seconds or less. Uh, and that's enough time to be there for the fast break. It is not enough time to be there for what happens afterwards. After a play breaks down, a play breaks down, it breaks down generally because they're out of sync and the defense is also out of sync. But the biggest problem that happens here is that what follows uh, is unpredictable. You're not in really good shape defensively, 
and they're doing things you've never seen before. Uh, you're not prepared uh, for them at all. Uh, it, it's a great time for the offense, but difficult uh, for the defense. Some teams, surprisingly, uh, in a game run many times, they don't run a play. Sometimes it's because they think they got a mismatch, uh, and they instead of going to the play that was called, they just try to get it into a guy in a post up or get it to a guy for a, uh, an isolation if they think there's a, a mismatch. Uh, but if it doesn't work out, uh, and uh, then they just go on their own. So you're back to like a breakdown, or at the end of the break, you are. Uh, playing against an offense you have not seen before and will not probably see again. Uh, it's, uh, that's the way it is in improvisation. The, that's what the, uh, the, the uh, offense will, can do to you. Uh, and the other next elements are things that they do, but that you kind of allow them uh, to do. Penetration. Uh, penetration by dribble or pass, but mainly by dribble, uh, creates a situation where uh, your teammates come to help. Uh, if if uh, it, 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 it seems like, you know, out perimeter players uh, learn very quickly to just yell for help uh, rather than try to defend their their man and then you know they expect the big guys back there uh, to bail them out but when that happens they bail them out when they have to come and help uh, the next pass if there's a pass off of that you're in scramble uh, and uh, and you're you're in that position where you're uh, struggling uh, to get back to some kind of organization uh, so, and the, the other thing uh, being closely allied with that is rotation. There's a, a lot of talk about rotating, uh, but rotating basically puts you in scramble. There's no other way around it. You, I, I take a look uh, and just watch. You'll see it all the time. Help comes, uh, uh, rotation, supposedly a rotation, another guy rotates here. Well, all of that is just scrambling, uh, putting yourself into scramble. Uh, it'd be, uh, be very careful about that, but if you have to do it, you should be prepared to play in scramble. Um, then the other thing, uh, too, is uh, traps. Um, you know, I like trapping, personally. Uh, but when we do it, uh, we know that we are going to have to uh, be, be able to play and scramble because that first pass out, if he gets, they get a pass out. You're, you have to, you have to really scramble to get back in position, and you better have a good plan uh, because otherwise you're, they're just going to, they're two passes away from an open shot usually, uh, unless you cover uh, correctly. And then, even then, you still face uh, the position of being in scramble uh, and still having to, to play. And those other stunts, the stepping out on a pick and roll, keeping, trying to get the driver to go, go wide. Uh, and if that guy who was setting a pick rolls, you're in scramble uh, and because you let your man go. And now somebody's got to pick him up, and somebody's got to pick this guy's guy up, uh, uh, and pretty soon you're you are really in scramble. Sometimes the offense lets you off the hook because they stop, maybe look for an isolation or whatever, uh, and you can you can reorganize. But if they don't let you reorganize, you're going to be in scramble. So those are, uh, there's other ways, too, that it happens in a game. Uh, but now let's talk about what we can do uh, about it. Uh, one of the things that hurts defenses is that all practice is done against set plays. 
set situations. I mean, they may break down a screen down or pick and roll uh, or some of those things. Um, but still, it's it's a it's a predictable, predictable uh, offensive uh, maneuver most of the time. It doesn't have to be, but it is most of the uh, of the time. So your practice is against uh, predictability, and then you're thrown into defending unpredictability, uh, and this causes some uh, real problems. I think one of the best things you can do as a coach to help your team be prepared and scramble is to play, I personally like four on four, uh, but don't let the, offense, uh, the offensive team run any kind of play. They have to make things up uh, and this puts the defense in a situation where they can't play a play. Uh, they can't, it's, the things that happen are going to be unpredictable, but this is what you want. This is the kind of uh, air, uh, the kind of environment you want them to be able to uh, succeed in, and they will. Uh, honestly, uh, when you do this uh, uh, many, many times, repeat it, uh, you find your players are remarkable in what they can uh, react to and uh, without knowing uh, what's what's coming up uh, next. You can do it with five on five, but what happens in five on five, uh, a couple things. One is there's it, a tendency to, to go to some type of play. Uh, and the other thing, the floor gets cluttered, more cluttered. Harder to see, harder to see situations. Uh, four on four opens things up and, uh, and, and makes you really play uh, a stronger. Um, when you do this, so four and four and five on five, whichever you prefer, uh, don't allow the screen roll and don't allow an isolation because the minute you do those two things, the defense is set. Now you're into a predictable uh, situation and uh, avoid that. But just just not allowing your players to uh, to do it in this particular drill. And uh, it'll become a defensive drill as well as an offensive drill. The other one uh, uh, I feel that uh, helps us is, and I showed you the drill, it contests the shot drill, four against three, three guys trying to cover four guys. That's really what happens in scramble most of the time. And, uh, in that drill, we are working on contesting shots out of the scramble. Uh, but also, it uh, is good practice from a scrambling situation. Now, you only saw it for a short period of time. Uh, but if you saw it over days and days and days, you would see how players learn how to cover and uh, react to things. Uh, it, it's, good, it, it's a very good drill for contesting shots, but it's also a good shot drill for playing in a scramble situation. And I'd say this, uh, develop the three pillars. Develop defending the ball. Uh, I can't say enough about that. Uh, your, your players should take pride in that. They can do it. The trouble is they don't practice it. The offensive guy, he practices driving and penetrating and all those things. Uh, defensive guys don't, so they're at a disadvantage if you practice it. You know, uh, when I was with Nelly, he told me that the Celtics, the great Celtic teams that they had under Orbach, after practice, almost always they would stay and go one-on-one. -on -one. I think they even had some kind of a, uh, a tournament, um, you know, between themselves informally. Uh, and, and, to, and, and that helped them uh, every day to, to work like that. Actually, Nelly, uh, almost every practice, we had some form of one and a one on one. And I thought it was very good, uh, very helpful uh, to our team. So practice the three pillars. Uh, defend the ball so you don't need help. 
uh, contest shots, uh, rebound, uh, and and then you don't need strategy in a uh, scramble situation. There is no strategy. Uh, so by those three things, if you can do those three things well, you'll be pretty good. You you'll be pretty good. You can maybe be better with a little little help and a little thinking, but uh, right uh, from the get-go, you uh, have some advantages most teams don't have. I'd say almost all teams don't have. Uh, and then one other thing, and the last thing is try to keep your defense intact. Uh, don't jump out and help so early. Uh, you know, I really uh, demand on our teams that uh, you don't uh, go help uh, until that guy is threatening to shoot a layup. Then you go after him, or you think he's going to get in to shoot a layup. I just saw yesterday, watching a game, uh, a guy comes driving down the middle. He's about at the free throw line, the guy guarding the postman, jumps out to stop the drive, take the charge, leaves the guy wide open for a layup. Uh, you know, the, those are the things that uh, going for help, try to keep your defense intact. Uh, Detroit, uh, when Rick Carlisle first went there, they were great at it. They just never rotated. They never got out of out of their defensive set, uh, and it helped them. Um, they 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 were a very good defensive uh, team. So I think uh, it, it's surprising to me that no one practices playing in uh, what I call the spaces when you're scrambling, because uh, it's really really an important part of defense. So, uh, thanks for watching, as always, and we'll see you next time.